Hey guys, my name is Deandra and I'm the lead technician at Culture Hub. Today I'll be walking you through output windows in Live Lab. Now, the cool thing about Live Lab is that you can pop out individual feeds, video feeds, as output windows. And you can utilize those output windows for a couple of different things. So you can utilize it for maybe an external monitor that you have. So maybe you have somebody else in the room and you want to make their feed a little bit bigger. You can pop out their window, drag it to an external monitor and make it bigger. You can also do the same for a projector. So if you have a projector, you have it plugged in into your um, computer, all the right hardware and cables, you can drag feeds into that projector using the output window um, and have them there. Now, with the output windows, you also can create video switchers. So what that video switcher allows me to do is I can basically create a, a window where I can switch between all the feeds in the room in one output window. And then when I pop out that output window, I can send it to, like again, I can extend, I can send it to an external monitor, I can send it to a projector, I can send it to um, a, in this case, what will be going over, I can send it to a streaming um, application like Streamlabs OBS um, and so many other things. So let's get started. Now I have these two video feeds. Now, if I hover over um, my cam twist video feed or Desiree's video feed. I'm gonna see I have a camera and then I have a little box with an arrow coming out of it If I click on that box What's gonna happen is this window is gonna pop out right and with this window like I was saying before you can drag it Wherever you need to drag it to so say you want to drag it into an external monitor You can have your HDMI hooked up to your computer your monitor and drag that over into a monitor um, Same goes for if you're using it with the projector have your projector and all the hardware connected to your um, your computer drag that over into your projector and again you can do the same thing we can do this with all the feeds in the room so if I close this one out and I hover over mine pop that out I can pop out my window as well now a good thing to note is that you shouldn't I repeat you shouldn't adjust these windows from the corner so, you know, usually if we want to make something a little bit bigger, we tend to grab the corner and make it bigger. But as you can tell, as I'm making it bigger, the size of my video is changing. So I'm getting, now I'm getting blank space at the top and the bottom. And I don't want that because once I get into Streamlabs OBS, that's going to affect um, how I, basically my canvas size. So if I wanted, if I accidentally did that, which I do all the time, what I can do is just exit out and pop it back out again. Pretty simple, right? So that's how you would pop out individual feeds. Now say I wanted to create a video switcher. Let's do that. So I'm going to X out. I'm going to do, I'm actually going to click on the settings and I'm going to click on column layout. So everything kind of goes into that little column. And then under number of output switchers, I'm going to select two because I'm going to build two output switchers. Then once that happens, I'm going to X out of this settings. I'm going to see now that I have a monitor with an A and a B above this settings knob, which wasn't there before. So that tells me something. Something's happening. So I'm going to click on the monitor with the A above it. And I'm going to see it, this little window pop out and it says switcher A. Now, if I go back to my feeds and I hover over my feeds again, next to that box with an arrow that I used to pop out the windows, I now see an A and a B. So I'm gonna click on the A because let's see what happens. And when I click on that, I can see that that feed, that cam twist feed, Desiree's feed, pops into switcher A. Let's do that with my feed as well. I see I hover over my feed and I also have that A as well. So I'm gonna click on that A And now I go to the feed. Now, another way I know that I'm definitely in Switcher A's feed is that there's a huge A right on top of my face right now, which is letting me know that I'm going to Switcher A. So now we're gonna click on Switcher B. Again, this monitor on the right-hand side, the B above it. We're gonna click on that, and I'm gonna send Desiree's feed to B. So I'm gonna click on B over that. So I see I have a big A over myself, so I'm going to A and there's a big B over Desiree's and she's going to B, right? So we just created a basic switcher. 
So if I wanted Desiree to go to both, that can happen. Now she's going to both. I want myself to go to B. I'm going to B now. So we created a basic video switcher. And again, usually for these things, you need actual hardware. In this case, you can do it all in Live Lab. The maximum amount of um, switches you can build in Live Lab is four. But if beyond that, you need to have output windows, you can just pop out individual feeds at that point. But for now, we're just gonna make two basic video switchers, right? So now I'm gonna pop these video switchers out. So again, that little box with an arrow, I see that I have that same icon next to my switcher A. I'm gonna pop that out. And same thing as before, it's gonna pop out into this pop um, into a witness own window. And then it also is gonna say at the top, live lab switcher A. So I know that this specific window is switcher A. And I'm gonna just take that to the bottom of my screen. And the same goes for switcher B. I'm gonna pop that out and take that to the bottom of my screen. And that one says switcher B. So when dealing with um, building, like I was saying before, it can tend to get tight, especially if you don't have an external monitor, you're working off like a laptop um, screen and you don't have that much space. Um, you kind of have to maneuver things around. So once I've created my video switchers, I tend to just make my chrome window smaller um well small enough that if i wanted to i can still switch between the two but that is not taking up so much space and then with the output windows from the video switchers you want to make sure that your screen can see at least one pixel of it what tends to happen a lot is that when you open it in streamlabs people are like i can't see it i can't see it but that's because maybe you took it down too low or you have them covering each other so streamlabs is not recognizing it as an output window so you wanna make sure that the screen can see at least one pixel. So I tend to leave them down about here where I can still see the top of it at least um, and see both. So we created our video switchers. We have to output put windows, which are A, which are B. I wanna get them into Streamlabs now. So I'm gonna open Streamlabs. Drag it over here. Now I have Streamlabs open. And I, when Streamlabs automatically opens and creates a new um, project, it automatically has one scene in it already. So I'm just gonna rename that scene, uh, let's rename it Desiree, or actually we'll rename it Deandra. Right, so my scene is Deandra, and I wanna get Deandra's feed into Streamlabs OBS. So next, I click on Deandra's scene, and then in source, there's a little plus button. And if you hover over it, it says add a new source to your scene. I'm gonna click on that. Then this pop-out window is gonna open and basically it gives me a whole bunch of options to select in terms of selecting your source. And what I want to select in this case is window capture. Now again, we're working in Streamlabs OBS, but there's also regular OBS. If you're working with regular OBS, the window capture also is in there. So it would be the same way. So you would select window capture and then add source. And I can leave it renamed or I tend to rename them just so that I know um, what the name is, which I'll show you guys a little bit later why that's important. And then in this little drop down box, I see Chrome, Google Chrome Live Lab Switcher A, Google Chrome Live Lab Switcher B, right? So Deandra, myself, I'm in Switcher B, so I'm gonna select Switcher B, and then I'm gonna press Done. So now I see myself in my canvas in Streamlabs OBS, which is amazing, that's great, right? So we're getting somewhere. Now I don't want that little top information that's not important, where it says like about blank, and then the name of the switcher, so we're just gonna do some transform transforming. So I'm gonna right click on my video feed, transform, uh, fit to screen. Again, right click, transform, edit transform. I'm going to take 54 off the top. This number is different for everybody. I just know 54 works in, in my case. You can just use the um, up and down to adjust as needed. Um, I'm gonna select done. Then again, right click, transform, fit to screen. Bam, we have my video feed in Streamlabs OBS, right? Right now in this video, we're only working with video, but 
in another case where you have audio added, you basically can stream from here, right? We're gonna do the same thing for that other video feed, which is Desiree's. So I'm gonna add a new scene. I'm gonna name it Desiree. Done. In Desiree's feed, I'm gonna add a new source. So that plus button. Again, we're doing window capture, add source. So this is why I'd say it's important to name your sources. Um, as you create, as you continue to build, um, and if you're using the same sources over and over again, instead of adding a new source, you can just select an existing source. So for example, say I wanted to use Deandra's feed again in this case, um, instead of adding a new source and then adding switcher B again, I can just select Deandra's um, feed under add existing source. And that's why I name it so that I know which one is which. Um, again, you should do this just because if you continue to add new source, it's gonna slow down streams, Streamlabs OBS, especially if you're using the same sources, just select it from your existing source, simpler. Um, but in this case, I'm adding a new source because I'm adding Desiree's feed. And again, I'm gonna name her D. Add source. Again, in that drop down, I see Live Lab Switcher A, Live Lab Switcher B. I know she's in Switcher A, so I'm gonna select Switcher A. Done. Then I'm gonna hover over her feed in the canvas. I'm gonna right click, transform, fit to screen. Right click, transform, edit transform. I'm gonna crop the top off. Again, my number is 54 different for everybody done right click transform fit to screen and bam I basically have two cues two scenes one is Desiree and one is myself and bam that's basically output windows thanks for checking out our videos thanks for playing with live lab thanks for giving us feedback um, we really appreciate it we're gonna continue to build um, and keep in contact, keep in touch, tell us what you're doing with Live Lab. And if you have any more ideas for it, um, we appreciate it. So yeah, I'm Deandra and peace. Be safe guys.